OK, um, welcome to today's session on food sustainability and reducing food waste. So this um, is our last session of Eco Week. This is another recording. I know the other ones are um, live recording so that we know no audience as such of this one. Um, but you are very welcome. Um, yeah, so equally UNESCO, who are we? We're a youth organisation and we focus on environmental education. So we um, were founded all the way back in 1986 and we work with young people all over Ireland um, and we basically facilitate young people to develop um, the skills they need to, to protect our environment. Um, we run a number of different programmes, one of which is the Young Environmentalist Awards. Um, so you may have heard the programme before, but um, this gives young people aged between 10 and 18 the opportunity to work together in a group and create an environmental action project. Project. Um, there's a, a diverse range of um, categories like waste, fashion, biodiversity and um, art and design, food, which is relevant um, to today's session. And um, so there is something for everyone. Um, and yeah, if anyone is interested in putting a project forward, you can visit www.yea.ie. Um, our registration deadline is the end of December. Um, but if you are interested, um, just reach out to us, um, even if it is a little bit later and we can we can see what we can um, what we can do for you. Um, this year we're also celebrating our 25th anniversary, so it's a an extra special year. Um, and I guess before I go ahead, a bit about me as well. Um, I am Sarah. I work on the Young Environmentalist Awards programme here at Eco UNESCO. Um, I have previously focused on food, so I would have um, done a um, master's in environmental psychology so basically studying the interaction between humans and the environment and I specifically focused on um, food waste behaviour so this is a, a topic of um, particular interest for me. So I want to kick off today's session with a statistic that puts um, things into perspective a little. So our food systems account for one third of global greenhouse gas emissions. And this is by the a study by the UN um, Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO in 2021. Um, so in other words, our way of producing and getting food into our homes is responsible for around one third of the gases um, that are causing our Earth's temperature to rise. So what does this mean? Well, it means that it's a really important thing to look at um, and it's important to see if there's anything that we can improve on in this field. But um, let's take a few steps back um, for a second. So why do we why do we even need food? Um, so food is important for a variety of different reasons um, and it plays a very important role in our lives. So if you think about um, your day to day, for example, um, I'm not sure what time it is where you're watching, but um, even take yesterday, perhaps you woke up and um, maybe you went straight for your, your bowl of cereal or your slice of toast to satisfy your morning hunger. And um, maybe as you continue through the morning, you felt a bit of a mid morning slump. Maybe you satisfied that with a snack. And um, then as you were coming up to lunchtime, maybe you were already thinking of the food that you'd prepared or were going to buy or make. Um, and at lunch, maybe you enjoyed that um, with your friends, kind of talking about um, your plans for the week. And um, maybe you just enjoyed it by yourself. Um, and after lunch, maybe you were full, satisfied, ready for the afternoon, or maybe you were thinking about your next meal um, and so on. Um, so as we can see, food does play a very big role in our day to day lives. Um, and if we break it down, we need food um, for four main reasons. So first of all, um, for energy and to sustain life. And um, so we, we need it for survival. Um, but not only that, we also need it for um, good health. And um, so all the, the vitamins, minerals, all that kind of thing, um, not just to, to stay alive, to, but to keep healthy um, and well. It's also really important for social connection. So if you think of any um, 
big kind of events, um, you know, if it's Christmas or your birthday or that kind of thing, we often really um, associate that with food and we often connect with others, friends or family um, over food. And also for happiness. And um, so if you think of your your favorite food and um, it does spark a lot of joy. So there's a, a big emotional component to food as well. But um, food doesn't just land um, on the table in front of us um, and we can't satisfy those four needs very easily. And um, so take this this lovely plate of pasta, for example, it has to go through a very long process um, before we see it and eat it as it, as it is on the right. Um, so everything there you see, the, the wheat growing or the tomatoes growing on the vine there, um, it has to be processed. Um, cooked, everything like that. So it's a very long process until um, we um, end up with the, the finished product. Um, and now I'm going to play a short clip about strawberries, again, to highlight that journey um, that food takes before it lands um, into our homes. OK, and I've stopped it there prematurely. We're going to revisit it later again. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it, it does. The strawberries go through a long, a long process before they end up in our house. Um, now, moving on, um, there are many graphics that portray our food production system such as this one. So this is a very complex one um, and I don't think anyone could understand it well without looking at it in a lot more detail. Um, but I did decide to put it in just to show how complex our system is. Um, and it includes a lot of different activities, um, some of which we saw there in the strawberry video, like food processing and preparation, um, but also other factors like geographical factors, um, climate, social, political. Um, so it is a, a complex system with lots of different factors involved. Instead, um, we'll take a look at a, a much more simplified version and um, which shows the different stages of our food production system. And we're just going to run through those briefly. So food production. So this stage involves growing and harvesting um, crops or rearing animals um, for meat or other kind of dairy products. Food processing. So after the raw ingredients are harvested, they're usually processed in some form. And um, so think of cleaning, sourcing, cooking, preserving or packaging of food items. Distribution. So the processed food um, that's transported to shops. Um, as we know them, we're wholesalers. Um, so yeah, it also might involve storage facilities in some way, shape, or form along the along the way. Then retail and market. So once food products reach retail outlets, and um, they're made available for consumers to purchase. So that, that can be chain stores um, like Tesco or it could be smaller independent um, stores or maybe it's online, farmers markets, etc. Consumption. So this is the stage where either households prepare the food um, or we consume the food at, at restaurants or cafes. Then waste recovery. So after consumption, um, there is often food waste. So um, that includes leftovers, um, vegetable peels or expired products, um, even yeah, 
packaging and um, so it doesn't need to just be food related um, and so this stage involves things like composting, landfill, incineration um, or recycling. Okay, um, so that's our food um, system in a nutshell. Um, but how sustainable is this system? Um, so maybe just have a think of, of some food sustainability issues that you know, know of that we face. Um, and on the right there, you see a graphic. So I know it's it's probably not very visible, um, but it has all of the SDGs or the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and how they each relate to food and ag agriculture. So again, this shows how um, much our food system is um, yeah, a complex system and how very connected it is to all of the SDGs. Um, yeah, so going back to the question, how sustainable um, is our food system? Well, um, our system isn't perfect and there are um, many sustainability issues that we face um, at each stage of the food production system. Um, so I'm not going to go into these in detail. However, we're going to focus on, on three key issues today. Um, first of all, biodiversity loss, then food insecurity, and finally focusing more on food waste. So biodiversity loss, first of all. So biodiversity is um, means the variety of living species on Earth. Um, so biodiversity loss is either the decline in the variety or the decline in the abundance of species um, in a particular ecosystem or across the entire planet. So we're seeing a loss in biodiversity, both in animal and in plant species. Um, now, how, how is this related to food? Well, I have three examples here um, about how the way in which we produce our food is, is leading to biodiversity loss. First of all, monoculture. Um, so monoculture is the agricultural practice um, where a single crop is cultivated on a large scale. So as you see there on the left, a large scale over an extended um, area. Um, so it, it concentrates on mass production, essentially, of a single a single crop. Um, so that means we're, we're losing some important um, plant species. So although there we have thousands of plant species um, worldwide um, and a lot of those are cultivated for food, only a handful of crops account for the um, world's most food production. So that's um, sugarcane, um, maize or corn, wheat and rice. So focusing on a small number of crops um, does have some benefits um, such as you know efficiency in, in planting um, or the managing and harvesting of crops and it's also lower cost but on the other hand it does heighten um, vulnerability to pests and diseases and it makes us more prone to large-scale crop failures um, and it also negatively impacts soil health. Use of pesticides. So in agriculture, pesticides and other chemical sprays um, are commonly used to protect crops from um, pests, uh, diseases and weeds. So while the sprays can be effective in controlling those kind of agricultural threats, they also pose risks um, to non-target animals and the broader ecosystem. So it can harm beneficial insects um, like bees, butterflies um, or other pollinators that are really important um, for the pollination of crops. Um, and some pesticides can, can kill the, the insects or animals directly, um, whereas others might impair um, their navigation or maybe it's their foraging behaviour or their, um, their reproductive abilities. And it can also contaminate nearby water sources. So that um, obviously has impacts then on um, aquatic life. Deforestation. So deforestation is often driven by the need um, for agricultural land or other um, 
human activities. So it involves clearing um, or the removal of, of forests or wooded areas. Um, and that has a number of, of negative implications on biodiversity, primarily involving um, habitat loss, um, which obviously impacts um, wildlife and also on a large scale ecosystems. And we'll take a look at an example here of the white rumped vulture, as you see on the right. So this was a vulture species in India, and it began to rapidly decline um, in the 1990s by 99%, so very um, a staggeringly high figure. And it was due to a drug called diclofenac, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but it was a, an anti-inflammatory drug for livestock. So the vultures would um, feed on the livestock um, that that died. Um, and yeah, since the, the drug was still in the system, um, the system of the livestock that had recently been treated, it also ended up affecting the vultures um, and it specifically led to renal failure. Um, and yeah, the species declined by 99%. And as a result, um, diseases like rabies and, and pests, they increased dramatically. Um, so the drug was banned, um, but yeah, numbers haven't um, recovered to what they were. The next issue that we're going to look at is food insecurity. So food insecurity is the condition of not having access to sufficient food or food um, of adequate quality. So basically it means you can't um, meet your basic food needs. Um, and it's a big issue we face um, due to various reasons um, like low income, conflict and droughts. Um, so I'm going to play this, um, this short clip here. OK, and this is the map um, here that shows us the percentage of the total population and um, that are food insecure worldwide. And um, so it's probably a bit um, small there, but the, the darker it is and um, the higher the percentage of food insecurity. And um, so I think it is pretty clear there that it, there's an unequal distribution across the globe. Um, so the global south um, are generally more affected by this. Um, so some countries even seeing 80 to 100 percent um, of food insecurity, particularly there in um, Central Africa. OK, um, so 800 million people um, experience food shortages and starvation. So uh, again, a very high figure, but at the same time, um, while well, estimates do vary, around one third of all food produced is wasted. Um, so that's a, um, yeah, quite a, a difference there. You know, we have such a um, high level of food insecurity, but yet we're 
um, wasting a lot of food globally. And um, so that kind of leads us on to our topic of food waste. And um, food waste refers to food that is not eaten, basically. And um, so here we have a graphic um, that shows us the different stages of the food chain and how much each, each sector or stage wastes um, in the EU. Um, so on the left, um, it's clear that households um, waste the most food. Um, so just more than half, um, half there. OK, and we can break the types of food waste down. So a considerable amount of food that we waste is avoidable. So there in the left. So that's food and drink um, that was thrown away that was at some point prior to disposal, edible. Um, so think of um, leftovers there, um, that could have been avoided. The black banana, the mouldy bread, at some point, um, that could have been avoided by um, maybe freezing or eating um, earlier. Um, then we have, let's go on to unavoidable, perhaps there on the right. So that's waste. Um, arising from food or drink preparation that isn't um, or has not been edible um, under normal circumstances. So we have um, bones there and um, eggshells or tea bags. And then in the middle, we've possibly avoidable. So this is a bit of a, a grey area, I guess. Um, so this is food or drink um, that some people eat, um, but others don't. So think of um bread crust maybe or there is um potato skins tops of carrots um aquafaba there like the chickpea juice basically from the can and um, so some people would eat those whereas um others would not so when we talk about reducing food waste and um, we're really looking at the two categories here so avoidable and possibly avoidable um, so you might be asking yourself, um, but what if I compost my food waste so that I'm not doing an, any environmental harm? I'm just going to take a look at this video here. OK, um, so here's a bit of a comparison. Um, so landfill versus composting. So landfill, when we throw something into landfill, there's a lack of oxygen. Um, so anaerobic decomposition takes place and it produces both methane and CO2. In comparison, composting, um, there's a presence of oxygen there. So food decomposes via aerobic decomposition um, and it produces some CO2 a bit less um, than landfill and doesn't produce methane. So the take home is um, keep composting. But it's not the solution. Um, so, yeah, there is kind of a lower um, emissions of, um, you know, the harmful gases like methane and CO2. But food waste is the waste of resources um, that were used to produce it. Um, so look at, let's go back to the um, strawberries example. So all of the water that was used, the land, the fuel that was used for transportation, packaging, all of that, um, that's what you're, you're throwing away. 
So we're going to go back to the strawberries here and we're going to watch the video right through till the end. Okay, and um, so yeah, as you can see, and um, the strawberries were unfortunately thrown away, and um, and yeah, that video I think just really brings us through, um, the full journey and makes it clear that um we are throwing away a lot more, um, or I guess a lot more than we think, um, when we throw food away. Okay, um, but enough of the the sad stories, um. What does a sustainable food system look like? Um, so let's focus on some of the solutions. So importantly um, to note that um, as individuals um, or you as young people, we can take powerful actions um, to reduce our impact um, in the realm of food, but we also need system change. There's a lot more um, that is needed than um, individual behaviour change. Um, so looking at the solutions, um, if you look at SDGs, part of SDG 12, so it's um, SDG 12.3, um, our goal is to have food waste, global food waste per head um, by 50% by 2030. So it is a um, an ambitious goal. Um, on the right there, we see a diagram um, of the solutions in a hierarchy. So at the top, when we're looking at food waste solutions, we really want to focus on food waste prevention. So stopping the generation of um, surplus food in the first place. Then the next one there is um, to feed people. So if we do have surplus food, we want to look at redistributing that food. Um, then after that, we would want to look at feeding livestock. And um, so still, um, I guess, looking at redistributing, but not to people, but to um, to animals. Um, and then it's kind of looking at, um, yeah, I guess, composting um, and kind of disposal of food. And um, those kind of being the, the last steps in the process. So as individuals, what can we do? Um, so planning ahead of time and um, smart shopping. So only buying and making what you need. So that might involve making a shopping list. Um, and generally people who do small shops um, frequently waste less. Um, we can look at our storage practices. So when we um, have food, we um, yeah can store it in a way that makes them last longer. So that might be um, putting things, certain things in the fridge, um, and making use of our, our freezer. Um, so a lot of things can be um, popped in there. So maybe if we see that something's about to go off and um, just putting it in the freezer and then um, having it for another day. Um, revisiting leftovers. So sometimes they get a bit of a, a bad rap and there's a lot of negative um, associations around it. Um, but they can be great. So they can be reheated, um, but not just that. Um, we, we can kind of change things up, maybe add something in um, and make it into something totally new. Using your senses. Um, so there are quite a few labels on food um, and there's quite a bit of um, confusion um, for consumers around food labelling. Um, so there's, you know, sell by, best before, use by, and we'll kind of go through um, 
a few of these in a second. Um, but it is important to use your senses rather than focusing only on the label. But to, to highlight this um, and to kind of run through um, the labels that we have on our food. So we've best before, um, sell by, use by. I think those are the, the three kind of main ones. So best before, um, what do we have here? I'll go back. And um, best before indicates um, when a product um, is nicer. So yeah, I guess it's about quality and um, not about safety. So we don't um, necessarily need to, to focus on this on this label. Um, sell by, so that's that's for the shop. So the date, um, the latest date they they can they should sell the the product by. Again, doesn't need to be our focus as consumers. Um, I'm skipping ahead here. Then the use by, so that's the last recommended date. Um, for us to use the product. So this is a safety date. And um, so really we should be um taking that into consideration. But yeah, just along the process, not to forget about your senses. Um, especially for things like veg and um, where we can really see if something is bad. Um, what we need to be more mindful of is kind of proteins like um yogurts or milk. We can often tell if that's spoiled. Um, so yeah, making sure to use your your taste, your sight, your smell. Um, all of that. As a community, what can we do? Um, so there are um, things like community fridges um, where members of the community might, um, if they have surplus food, um, they kind of leave it there for others to take. Sharing spaces, there's food waste cafes as well. Um, so that's a picture there on um, of one in the Netherlands. Um, so it's a group of volunteers that um, collect food surplus food from markets and local shops and they come together they make dinners um, and then they open up the cafe to the public so anyone can come in um, and eat the food with them and um, so that's a lovely example there um, of food waste redistribution um, there's also food redistribution from like organizations to individuals so um, I think Too Good To Go is probably one of the most popular ones. So that's an, an app um, where shops um, kind of input when they have surplus food and individuals can then kind of sign up and collect it um, at a given time. There's food redistribution from organisation to organisation. So that's um, Food Cloud. Um, so I might just play this video here. OK, and I'll stop that there. Um, and lastly, awareness campaign. So stopfoodwaste.ie is um, an awareness campaign by the EPA. And um, so I would encourage you to, to take a look at that there. Um, but there are really um, amazing um, efforts to reduce food waste. 
Um, so it is great to see all of those um, those great examples. Um, OK, and then policies and laws. Um, so things like standardised date labels um, laws to protect food donors and um, tax incentives um, to businesses that donate or kind of bans maybe um, to dispose of safe to eat food. And um, so those are all kind of potentials there um, on the policy and law front that would help um, reduce food waste. Um, Great. So that was that was it. Um, there are some other sessions um, on our YouTube. So if you'd like to take a look at those, if you haven't already. Um, and if you have any questions on anything, um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. So you can email us um, there or give us a call um, and we'd be, be happy to help. Thank you.